Enjoy the story. Please subscribe for more. The Uruguayan Air Force Flight 571 was a chartered flight that was supposed to fly from Montevideo, Uruguay to Santiago, Chile, but it crashed in the Andes Mountains on October 13, 1972. The inexperienced co-pilot, Lt. Col. Dante Hector Lagarara, was at the controls when the accident occurred. He mistakenly believed the aircraft had reached Curico, where the flight would turn to descend into Putaquel Airport. Lagarara failed to notice that instrument readings indicated he was still 60 to 70 kilometers, 37 to 43 miles, from Curico. As he began to descend, the aircraft struck a mountain, shearing off both wings and the tail section. The remaining portion of the fuselage slid down a glacier at an estimated 350 kilometers per hour, 220 miles per hour, and descended about 725 meters, 2,379 feet, before crashing into ice and snow. The flight was carrying 45 passengers and crew, including 19 members of the Old Christians Club rugby union team, along with their families, supporters, and friends. Three crew members and nine passengers died immediately, several more died soon afterward due to the frigid temperatures and the severity of their injuries. During the following 72 days, the survivors suffered extreme hardships, including exposure, starvation, and an avalanche, which led to the deaths of 13 more passengers. The remaining passengers resorted to cannibalism. As the weather improved with the arrival of late spring, two survivors, Nando Parado and Roberto Canessa, climbed a 4,650-meter mountain peak without gear and hiked for 10 days into Chile to seek help, traveling 61 kilometers 38 miles. On 23 December 1972, two months after the crash, the last of the 16 survivors were rescued. It was supposed to be a simple flight, a quick journey from Montevideo, Uruguay to Santiago, Chile. But as the plane took off, the passengers could feel that something was off. There was an unshakable feeling of unease that permeated the air. Perhaps it was the cloud cover, or the turbulence that tossed the plane up and down, but everyone on board knew that something was wrong. As the flight progressed, the pilots relied on their instruments to navigate through the clouds. They couldn't see the mountains that rose up around them, and they had no idea that they were about to crash. The pilot, Ferradas, had flown across the Andes 29 times previously, but this time was different. He was training co-pilot Ligarara, who was at the controls, and the inexperience of the young pilot was about to have deadly consequences. Ligarara mistakenly believed that the aircraft had reached Curico, where the flight would turn to descend into Putaquel Airport. He failed to notice that instrument readings indicated he was still 60 to 70 kilometers, 37 to 43 miles, from Curico. As he began to descend, the aircraft struck a mountain, shearing off both wings and the tail section. The passengers felt a jolt as the plane hit the mountain, and then everything went black. When the passengers came to, they were in the middle of a disaster. The plane had crashed into the Andes Mountains, and they were stranded in the middle of nowhere. The survivors quickly realized that they were in a fight for their lives. The harsh conditions, extreme cold, and lack of food and water would be their constant companions for the next 72 days. Over the next few days, the survivors huddled together in the wreckage, trying to stay warm and waiting for help to arrive. But as the days wore on, it became clear that they were on their own. The search parties that had been dispatched to find them had been unsuccessful, and the harsh winter conditions made it nearly impossible for planes or helicopters to fly in to rescue them. With no other options, the survivors had to resort to drastic measures to stay alive. The remaining portion of the fuselage, containing the survivors, slid down a glacier at an estimated 350 km per hour, 220 miles per hour, and descended about 725 meters, 2,379 feet, before crashing into ice and snow. The impact was so severe that it caused the deaths of three crew members and nine passengers immediately. Several more died soon afterward due to the severity of their injuries and the freezing temperatures. The situation for the survivors was dire. They were stranded in the middle of the Andes, with no food or water, and no means of communication with the outside world. They were at an altitude of 3,570 meters, 11,710 feet, in freezing temperatures, 
and they had to endure extreme hardships, including exposure, starvation, and an avalanche, which led to the deaths of 13 more passengers. The remaining passengers had to find a way to survive. They had no choice but to resort to cannibalism. They were forced to eat the flesh of their dead friends and family members to sustain themselves. The decision was not made lightly, and it caused immense emotional trauma for the survivors who were forced to engage in this horrific act. The situation was made even more dire by the fact that they were at such a high altitude, which made it difficult for their bodies to acclimate to the environment and for their wounds to heal. As the weeks turned into months, hope began to fade. The survivors were weak and malnourished, and they were running out of options. But then, two of the survivors, Nando Parado and Roberto Canessa, decided to take matters into their own hands. They knew that they had to find help if they were to survive. Despite the odds, Nando and Roberto climbed a 4,650-meter, 15,260-feet mountain peak without any gear and hiked for 10 days into Chile to seek help, traveling 61 kilometers, 38 miles. It was a harrowing journey, and they faced numerous challenges along the way, including the risk of falling off the mountain and the possibility of encountering hostile wildlife. Finally, after weeks of hardship and danger, Nando and Roberto reached civilization. They alerted the authorities, and rescue teams were sent to the crash site. On the 23rd of December 1972, two months after the crash, the last of the 16 survivors were rescued. It was a miraculous end to a terrifying ordeal, and the news of their survival drew worldwide headlines that grew into a media circus. But for the survivors, the ordeal was far from over. They had endured unspeakable horrors, and they would carry the scars of their experience for the rest of their lives. The tragedy of the Andes flight disaster had become a cautionary tale, a story of human endurance and the will to survive against all odds. And it would be remembered for generations to come as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of unimaginable adversity. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.